Hello, my name is Deandra Ryan Moss, and this is part three of three of our What the Function series. Today we're going to be talking about higher order functions. So this is a slightly more advanced topic in functions. So if you're not comfortable with JavaScript functions and the basics of how to use and write them, I would definitely recommend you go back and check out our first two videos. If you're feeling comfortable with those topics, then let's go ahead and delve into higher order functions. I've started out by writing us a function called log negative. And this function has one piece of input, number. So it takes in a number. It saves the negative version of that number into a variable called negative, And then it logs that to the console. So just to make sure we're comfortable with how this works, let's try it out. So log negative of 5 logs negative 5. If we throw in a negative number into log negative, it logs a positive version. If we throw in 0, it just logs 0. So this works about exactly how you'd expect. So let's say that we had an array with the numbers 1 through 5 in it. What if we wanted to log negative to every single element in this array? Well, there's a few different options. The first would be we could write out five different calls to log negative for each member of this array. But that's not very efficient, and it's not very neat, and definitely not good practice. Another option that you might think of would be to use a loop. We could write out a for loop that loops through this array and logs every single member of it. That would work as well, but there's an even more sleek solution. It's called a for each loop. So the syntax for for each is we put the name of our array, and then a dot, and then we call for each, and we pass in a function. And what this is saying is, for each member of this array, apply this function to it. So let's see how it works. Sure enough, we get the negative version of 1 through 5 all logged to the console. So this is a higher order function. And what that means is that it's a function that takes in a function as an argument. Notice that our input is, in fact, a function. And there's something important to note here, which is that we're passing in the function itself. We're not calling the function and passing it in. If we tried that, it gets a little confused. So that's really all there is to a higher order function, a function that takes in a function. So this is starting to get more complicated, because as I've mentioned again and again, the most important question you have to ask yourself when it comes to functions is, what is the input and what is the output? And so now we not only have to worry about what is the input and output of for each, we also have to worry about what is the input and the output of log negative. So let's answer that question separately. So for each has the input of a function. What about output? Well, as we've seen before, the easiest way to check the output is to go ahead and save it in a variable and see if it's defined. It's not. Output is undefined, which means that for each has no output. Well, what about log negative? This one's easier to tell because we've written it ourselves so we can see what goes inside of it. So we see that log negative has the input of a number. And as we can see, there's no return statement, so it has no output. So I would definitely encourage you, when you're first working with higher order functions, to write out the input and the output for both the function itself and the function that's the argument. This is really important because it becomes quite easy to mix up which one you're thinking about. So we know that for each takes in a function, and it has no output. And we also know that the function takes in a number and has no output. All right, so let's take a look at another example of for each. So say instead of logging the negative version, we wanted to log the number plus 3. So out here, we could write a function called plus 3. But what if we weren't planning on using that function for anything but this for each loop? It seems kind of excessive to declare a variable called plus 3, write it out, and then pass it in. So there's a second way that we can use for each. And that's with an anonymous function. That means that we just write the function as we go. So we wanted a function that takes in a number 
it adds three, and then it logs the added version. All right, let's try it out. Sure enough, it worked exactly the way we hoped. We got all the numbers in our array, but each with an additional three added to them. So let's take a look at this anonymous function. It can be a little confusing at first, but all we've done here is we've written the function without ever naming it. So we use the keyword function, followed by the parentheses that have any sort of input we need, and then we have our curly braces with the logic inside. We can pass this thing straight into the for each loop, and it knows that this will be the function that we use on every element of our array. So as we've seen, there's two different ways to use higher order functions. We can write an anonymous function that we drop in directly, or we can write a named function and then pass in that name. Either way works perfectly fine. I'd encourage you to start with whichever way seems more comfortable, and then as you're growing as a programmer, try mixing in both so that you're comfortable writing both ways. So now that we've seen how to use anonymous functions, how do we write them? Well, let's try to write a function called first. So first is going to take in two arguments, an array and a callback. And a callback just means a function that's passed in as an argument to another function. So you might hear that keyword. It really just means a function. So it's going to take in an array and a callback function and we want to apply this callback function to the first item in the array. So how do we use callback? Well, it's a function, so we'd use it just like any other function, with parentheses. And we want to pass in an argument first. So let's go ahead and grab the first element of the array, which is going to be at index 0, and then pass it into our callback function. All right, let's try it out. So if we run first and we pass in this collection, and then for our callback, we pass in console.log, sure enough, it'll log the first element in this array. But as I mentioned in my previous video, while examples are important, we want to make sure that we don't just try it out with one example. We want to play around with a lot of different examples to make sure that our function is applicable to all sorts of arrays. So what happens if I add more elements to this array? Well, we only are concerned with the first element, so adding additional elements shouldn't change anything. And sure enough, it doesn't. If we change our first element, this should affect the behavior of our function. And it does. So we've played around with a couple different examples. It seems to behave the way we want, so I'm feeling pretty confident that I've written my first function correctly. So let's summarize what we know and what we don't know when it comes to this higher order function. Well, we certainly know that array is going to be an array, but we don't know how long it's going to be. We don't know what type of values it's going to contain. We don't know if they're going to be in order or not. And as far as the callback function goes, we know it's going to be a function, and we know it's going to take in one argument, but we have no idea what it's going to actually do. So when you're writing these higher order functions, Keep in mind that while examples are important, especially examples of possible callback functions, that the callback itself must be treated as a general function. The only way to get good at writing higher order functions is to practice. So make sure that you're thinking about different higher order functions you might write and practicing them. As well, to make life a little easier for you, we've included a few examples of higher order functions you might practice. So go ahead and click below to check those out. Well, that wraps up part three of three of our What the Function series. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and check out some of our other ones. As well, be sure to like the video or share it with a friend. And definitely leave us a comment where you let us know what you found helpful and some suggestions for other videos that you'd like to see. Well, that wraps up our What the Function series. Thanks for sticking around, and hopefully you know quite a bit more about functions than you did three videos ago.